Alrighty everyone, today we're looking at some at, uh, two-stroke myths, misconceptions, and uh, you know, hopefully a route to a better understanding of what's going on in two-stroke motor. The topic today is blowdown, and next, next episode I, pro I plan on tackling compression on a gauge. Um, so... Let, let's start with blowdown. Um, in no manner is this like a call out against anyone or, you know, telling people they're doing everything wrong. This is just me trying to explain what's going on. Um, and hopefully give everyone else better understanding. You know, understanding is, you know, being able to explain what's happening. You know, say, hey, I can tell you why A plus B equals C. Knowledge is just knowing A plus B equals C. So that's what we're trying to do with that information. And again, this is more on the theory side of things. I think it's pretty accurate on the theory side of things. And, um, so, you know, here's your note. Theory only gets you so far, and it's only so effective. In the end, you're still going to have to go through trial and error. Trial and error is very effective, but it's also very time-consuming. So, the goal here is to improve, you know, use some knowledge or understanding to improve efficiency. To, uh, to improve you know, your trial and error, which is not very efficient. Um, you know, if you can learn or understand something better, you may make the same progress with knowing what's happening as it would, in, you know, you, make, you may make the same progress in a month that it would take you to make in six months to a year here. <clears throat> So, on to the actual topic. So, everyone likes to define blowdown as the time it takes, or the time between your exhaust opening and transfer opening in a two-stroke. In reality, that is false. Uh, blowdown in a two-stroke is the time it takes after the exhaust opens in the cylinder for the pressure in the cylinder to drop to a point low enough that the pressure of the transfers is greater than what is currently in the cylinder and that allows transfers to fill the cylinder. Therefore, blowdown does not depend on your transfer timing as long as the pressure in the transfers is greater than the pressure in the cylinder once the exhaust is open or after the exhaust is open um, that probably gonna muddy waters because someone's gonna say oh well I like to use 20 degrees of blowdown well that really doesn't matter as long as your your pressure in your cylinder has gotten to a point low enough that the pressure in the transfers is greater and uh, in reality trying to calculate your blowdown time in degrees is very very complex this is the equation to actually calculate the uh, this is going to give you time in seconds but that's going to be an estimate of the time in seconds it takes for that cylinder to reach uh, to reach atmospheric pressure uh, what this equation is is going to be 5.5 times your pressurized volume over 
the effective area of your port which that's going to take into effect a uh, that's your port area times a flow coefficient because the effective area is not the same as the port area itself and it says if you don't know your flow coefficient you're supposed to uh, use 0.85 as the flow coefficient times the natural logarithm of your initial pressure over atmospheric pressure times the square root of the specific gravity of the gas over the compressibility factor at initial pressure yeah uh, so blow down isn't as simple in degrees it isn't as simple as saying hey the cylinder needs this many a degrees to calculate it for a two-stroke you'd have to go through all of this and then find out how to convert the time in seconds to the degrees rotation of the crankshaft at whatever RPM that's a whole lot of math. I don't even know what a natural logarithm is. I just know this is some sort of crazy physics calculation. And uh, it may not even be physics calculation. It may just be like an engineering calculation. Super complex. I do better with pictures. So I drew some pictures. And we're going to make some assumptions here saying, uh, you know, what these pictures are is just a really crude port map. This would be an exhaust. These are transfers. I labeled it as, hey, this is an exhaust. These are transfers. It, in, it's going to be, you know, if you put it in 3D, it'd be looking like this, but this is a 2D version of it. What I did here is, uh, let me find a pointer. What I did here is made three different exhaust ports. I left the transfer ports the same size, left the spacing between the roof of the exhaust and the roof of the transfers the same on all three pictures. Well, which one of these is going to need the most number of degrees to let your exhaust pressure or let your cylinder pressure uh, become neutral and which one of these is going to need the least number of degrees well it looks that's like a complex question, but if you look at the pictures, it becomes pretty easy. The area of this exhaust is smaller than these. You're going to need more degrees of rotation for your cylinder to reach a neutral pressure that your transfers can overcome. Because you have less area for the, the compressed gases to exit this one's going to need less degrees than the top one because the area is bigger this one's going to need even less degrees because the area is bigger so hopefully y'all can see what's going on here is that i made these just you know one square longer than the last so essentially a wider exhaust is going to decrease your necessary blowdown time. That's the simplest term. So if you're thinking in blowdown, you need to be thinking wide exhaust and exhaust area because that's what's going to decrease the number of degrees you need between your exhaust and transfers for the engine to function properly. And I even made you know kind of a cruddy graph here that would depict pressure in the cylinder this is top dead center and the numbers are not to scale at all 
but it shows you the kind of roller coaster that's happening in the motor. These would be crank rotation in degrees. At top dead center, your pressure is still climbing. Remember, most of your ignitions fire in advance, so that's before top dead center. So most of your ignitions are firing, you know, over here where you're at 30 degrees, 20 degrees, whatever. So you've created a spark pressure is still climbing as you reach zero and pressure still continues to climb after you reach zero because of the fuel combusting. Your peak pressure occurs after zero top dead center. I think I've read around 15 degrees, it might be 10, it might be 20. Don't know, but I do know that it occurs after top dead center. Here's your peak pressure and as the crank rotates your piston moves down the volume is is increasing for the uh, for your combusted gases to expand so your pressure drops and you're going to have a pressure you know say your exhaust opens at 105 Pressure is going to continue to drop after the exhaust opens, and it's going to probably it should probably drop more rapidly, but then it's going to go to a spot where it evens out. Say the transfer is open at 125. Well, if your transfer is open, your exhaust is still open. Open. There's still time for that exhaust gas to escape while the transfers are filling the cylinder. And you can see here the overlap between your exhaust port and your transfers. There is going to be some overlap between them because there just is. So while these are filling the cylinder, you still have gases escaping the cylinder. Your piston hits bottom dead center, which would be 180 degrees after top dead center. Your pressure is going to start to climb after that because the piston's moving back up, the volume in the cylinder is decreasing, and you've added a denser, uh, a denser gas in that cylinder. So now you have air and fuel mixture. It's still getting spit in there because the transfers are still open. Pressure, pressure, climbs, 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 and then you basically hit this cycle over again where your transfers are going to close, your exhaust is going to close, then you get uh, ignition and the combustion process all over again. probably didn't do as good of a job explaining it as someone else could, but in reality, blowdown expressed as a number of degrees in a build is nearly irrelevant from every builder. Are there stellar builders that will spit out blowdown numbers yes but that goes back to the time uh, or that goes back to the beginning where I said hey what are we doing with this information these awesome builders have a ton of trial and error time so they may express duration numbers by exhaust and blowdown timing but in reality, they've just run into exhaust durations and transfer durations that work really well with each other. Um, so, yeah, in a nutshell, I don't think, you know, 99 point nine percent of people building chainsaws or telling you how to build chainsaws or two-stroke anything 
on YouTube understand Blowdown. Uh, this is hopefully increases everyone's understanding of it and what's actually happening versus what you know is said to be happening um, if you disagree you're more than welcome to but I'd like an explanation of why uh, I like being able to I like having uh, you know measurable data that says well this is why you're wrong uh, otherwise you're just taking guesses at why you're wrong and a guess is a guess sometimes the right sometimes the guess is wrong also that just turns back into theory and now we're in this massive loop of hey that's that's theory it's only going to get you so far and it may not be exactly what's happening in the real world and uh, that's that's where I'd kind of like to delineate things and try and clarify as much as I know or understand and uh, in making these videos it kind of helps give me a better understanding of things too um, this is giving you a, a picture this is a real wordy explanation of what's going on but yeah uh, in a nutshell I don't think blowdown is a good thing to base your builds off of unless you're the one that's doing this kind of calculation stuff here then by all means love to hear from you and your explanation of how to build something that would be uh, pretty awesome um, other than that, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to end the video, so I'm just rambling here. But hopefully that did something for you. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, this is great. You hated it. I'm an idiot. Whatever. Just give an explanation of why.